to mark Human Rights Month, Southern Africa and the global campaign to dismantle corporate power hosted a two-day Right to Say No national workshop attended by over 70 activists from mining communities across the country. They discussed a number of issues under the theme, building the just transition from below through advancing the right to say no. According to Maxine Bezadenhut, Dismantle Corporate Power campaign program officer and the co-organizer of the workshop, the annual Right to Say No workshop was an important moment to unite different communities in their resistance to extractivism and to renew energy in the spirit of Comrade Bazooka Khatebe towards advancing the right to say no. Today we are here to stand in solidarity with struggles against extractivism, against mining, against industrial agriculture, against industrial and commercial fishing. And we are saying no to those forms of development. We are here for a development that is led by grassroots people. The development mustn't come from outside and come and tell us, we want this year, we want that day, we want a bridge, we want a road. City high. Brian Ashley from the Southern Africa and the Global Campaign to Dismantle Corporate Power spoke about the difference between a just energy transition and a just transition and where does this idea come from? In the next days, we have to resolve that we are going to take up the struggle with great intensity, much greater than the intensity of the war Margaret, was it you who spoke about the war that is being fought against us? It is true. There is a war that is being fought by these extractors. It's no longer possible to, for us to think about fighting that war just by ourselves in the Popo. On day two, Matthew Slabane, national organizer for the Right to Say No campaign, opened with a discussion on building a just transition from below. According to Slabane, a just transition is about us participating in the process, but if we are excluded, then it is not just. As we speak, there's an expansion of a mining project in Somkele where communities are going to be relocated. In the Northern Cape, the same thing is going to happen. Up in Newcastle is happening, in Pumalanga, Pushpak Ridge is happening, in Limpopo it is happening. So the uprooting of communities continues. So when they take away the land from you, they are taking every means of your survival. Nontle Mbatuma, Amadiba Crisis Committee spokesperson, spoke about the challenges of advancing the right to say no in rural communities. Lawyers are a part of our strategy. They are not here to solve our problems. Lawyers will be strong if communities are strong, she said. And the transnational corporation, they know all the laws. But who breaks the most the laws? It's them. That is why it's important for us to know the laws and to challenge them. It's part of our strategy that we're going to use um, those laws. Sophia Sidaris Haddad, candidate attorney from Richard Spohr Attorneys, explained to the activists about consultation and consent under the Interim Protection of Informal Land Rights Act and how it gives informal landowners a voice. So the TKLA was introduced in Parliament as a bill in 2015 and it was presented as an act that recognizes the Khoisan people and their leadership. This was a very supported um, uh, move. However, the act, the contents of the act have much further reaching uh, consequences than the name might suggest. The TKLA centralizes traditional authority um, which allows companies to continue 
their apartheid and colonial practices of concluding agreements with traditional leaders to the exclusion of the directly affected members of the community who, who are the ones who are going to face the consequences of these developments. Tony Kutsia from Namakoland said they were campaigning for the right to say no to become law. My name is Tony Kutsia. I'm residing in a town named Komagas. It's in the Namakoland area. Uh, I belong to the Fia 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 Tia. movement that was established in the Maculan and I represent the community of Kumahas at this forum. Our most important challenges we are facing in Kumahas especially is the mining activities that took place in Kumahas namely the Mafisa mining uh, operations uh, in Komagas. They mine with no consent of the community whatsoever, no consultation, nothing. They do it simply on their own and they doesn't talk to the community leaders or the community itself. It talks to the to the ward councillor and the uh, ward committee. Uh, and uh, our community is very, very, very unsatisfied with the, the manner in which they do the things there. Lindelani Mbulawa from Amadiba Crisis Committee said the government is forcing things to be done by taking decisions without proper consultation with communities. Um, my name is Lindelani Mbulawa from Amadiba Crisis Committee. The problems we face, especially here in the Wild Coast, I'm going to start there. We have a problem with the government, which is forcing things to be done by taking decisions on our behalf without proper consultation with our communities. We just see some things being done. For example, we heard rumors about mining being proposed, and the next thing, we just heard that a mining company was granted mining rights which means certain information was hidden from the community. They were misinformed and made to sign certain documents, even though community members knew best what the community's development needs were. Another issue is Shell's seismic survey, which we only saw in the newspaper that Shell was planning a seismic blasting off the wild coast, but we managed to challenge Shell in court. Another issue is that of Sunroll, who does not want to consult with the community. Actually, Sunroll listens to the community, but they are being forced by the ruling party, which is the ANC, to build the N2 in Amadiba. So we are currently challenging them to shift the road, but they are dividing the communities. But we want the road to be built in the center of Amadiba so that all of the villages can benefit. The Southern Africa campaign to dismantle corporate power is the regional leg of a global campaign. It aims to bring partner organizations, affected communities and movements together to confront and break down corporate systems which destroy their livelihoods, home and health while violating their basic rights as well as the state policies which enable this. For more information, go to www.stopcorporateimpunity.org or follow us on Twitter at StopCorpPower.